Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson here with my beautiful co host and producer of the Model Health Show, Jade Harrell. What's up, Jade? What's up, Sean? Are oh, you doing some ninja stuff, huh? <laughs> some ninjutsu. I don't know what it, is. it felt like Egyptian. <laughs> Walk like an Egyptian. Whatever works. Whatever works. So, <laughs> how, how are you today? Sean, today I am revitalized. Mm, I like that. Yes. I really like that. What is Thank that? Thank you. I am revitalized and energized. Mm, I like it. Finally. Finally. Whew. Recovering from the summertime sickness. And man, it took me over. Yeah, it, it got it got on you. It got me good. But I fought back. You, <laughs> you whooped it. I did. Well, I'm glad to see you're back in action. Thank and everybody, right thank you so much for joining us. We've got an incredible show lined up for you today. I'm pumped. Oh, I've yeah. got a good friend of mine on today and just an incredible story. So much value. You know how some people are just walking around, they're just oozing value. Yes. You know, it's just like pouring out of their pores. Well, that's <laughs> yes. Pouring out of their pores. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'd like to introduce myself. Myself. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. check this out. This guy is dripping with value. I want a sponge. So get <laughs> get Get a towel and a sponge. Yes, I want to dance. And him. use this value and implement it in your life. I'm telling you, he's just a really great person. I'm super excited to have him on. But first, let's give a quick shout out to our show sponsor, onnit.com. Sure. Head over to O N N I T dot com forward slash model, and you're going to get 10% off all of your health and human performance supplements, but also you get 10% off the hemp force protein, That's which nice. is more so con considered a food. And by the way, guys, if you're not using the hemp force, what are you waiting for? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? It's so good. It's so good for you. You already know the facts about it. Highest source of edestin of any food you're going to find. Albumin, which is a soft globular protein. It's really, really di digestible and easily assimilated by your cells. And we all can use a protein supplement in our world today. It's not just for your body. Of course, if, especially if you're working out, you need that. But what about your brain? Right. You know, your brain. Your body is really a protein machine. This is why it's so important. You're also going to get 10% off the Shroom Tech Sport, Shroom Tech Immune. And there's some other cool things, like they've got this product called 180. Uh-oh. Yeah, right. So when you need to do a 180. Right, not a 360. An all-nighter. <laughs> right. That's the thing. Some people are like, I just did a complete 360. Right, well, you're, you're starting where you started. Where you're, right. Yes. 180 yeah. is when we flip it around. So this is for, you know, if you've been out all night, on you got jet lag mm -hmm. or you've uh, maybe you've got a little bit of a hangy over <laughs> you know but just something to really jump start you and give you some earth grow nutrients to help to boost mm -hmm. your energy um, so i love that product i actually do take it with me when i fly now so Sweet. so they've got so many great things head over and check them out o n n i t dot com forward slash model for 10 percent off now let's get into the itunes review of the week this is my favorite part this one says the model bomb with five stars I have a man crush on Sean, <laughs> not just because he provides amazing information, but also because he is a pleasure to listen to. Always great information, always delivered in a highly actionable and workable framework, always entertaining and so upbeat and positive. Just what I need when I'm feeling low or tired. Wow, man. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I received that, man. That thank nice? you so much. Mm -hmm. Everybody, thank you so much for leaving these reviews on iTunes. All it truly does mean the world to us. And especially messages like that that have a little something personal. Yeah. The man crush means a lot. Man crush Monday all right. day. It takes a man to Sean, tell you. Sean, I don't think I've been a man crush Monday. Ah. But hopefully now people are going to hashtag me. I'm out there on Instagram now, guys, man. at Sean Model. Monday. So holler at me. And um, just got... Guys, thank you so much. It truly does mean a lot to us. But they need to also make sure that they subscribe to you on Periscope so that when you go on live and they want an opportunity to ask questions and see where you're at and connect with you, they'll get a notification. Yeah. So it's also at Sean Model on or Periscope. Sean Stevenson at per on Periscope so that they can be ready whenever you go live. Yep. I'm new to Periscope. I'm on there and I'm Locked loving it. it. So definitely check me out there as well. We actually presented a whole so presentation cool. that I did when I was out of town recently for an event. Yeah. And I'm going to shout those guys out real soon because yeah. it was a powerful event. Those I want to thank that, you for taking us with you. Yeah, that was, it was like my pleasure and we can do that stuff now. Mm -hmm. You know, so those guys are Fitness Rich. Check them out online, Fitness Rich. And they're at Fitness Rich on Instagram as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and get into our special guest and our topic of the day. Today we have on New York Times bestselling author, George Bryant. And he's also known as the civilized caveman, <laughs> right? Fantastic chef. 
All right, the banana bread. Let me tell you about oh, it. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It is something special. But he's here to share far more than that today. He's just a really great person, a really good friend. I'd like to welcome to the Model Health Show, George Bryant. How you doing today, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. Even better to have you on to be able to see your face, man. It means a lot to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm humbled. Jade, nice to meet you and to be in both of your companies. Uh, oh, it's wonderful. super awesome and inspiring. I listen to you both. And uh, obviously, everyone knows I talk to Sean all the time. I feel like I should be thanking you and acknowledging you for the stand that you take for people with your show and what you do. So that review knocked it out of the park. And I tell you on the phone, and I'll tell it in front of Jade, but uh, it's a true pleasure to be a friend and have you as a guide and someone I look up to. So thanks for having me. Man, a little man crush from you, that's, too? That's why I love this guy. He, he, oh, I'm man crush all day. I got it. no shame. Vulnerability <laughs> for days. <laughs> Vulnerability. Love it, the, uh-huh. the big V, the, the other big V. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's keep it moving. <laughs> George, man, um, Let's, let's just talk about food for a second. You know, it's obviously a pretty big component of both of our lives. We're both big time foodies. We love food. And I know Jade too. And it just everybody, Shu, who's in our studio, he does a lot of the stuff behind the scenes, getting the video and audio stuff together. So we're all foodies. Mm-hmm. And we want to know, man, like how did you start coming up with all these amazing recipes? Like was it time intensive experiment? What drew, drove you to start doing that? Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, I wish I knew the answer too. I, um, <laughs> no, no, honestly, what it all started, and this is, this is crazy, is I was in Afghanistan in 2010, and um, we'll get into my story, but I'd struggled with bulimia for almost 12 years, um, you know, always struggling with my weight, with my health. Uh, I have traumatic brain injury from multiple concussions in the service, as well as nerve damage from a lot of trauma that happened to me. So, you know, pain and sickness and not sleeping and migraines and allergies, like all these things just like destroyed my body. And I was literally of all places in the middle of Afghanistan, 8,000 miles away. And I literally of all things stumbled across Rob Wolf's book mm. and, uh, and happened to be sitting in the middle of the desert. I had nothing else to do. I had to stay awake for 48 hours on a post and I read it cover to cover and I'm like, this is what I've been looking for. The only problem was is I used to eat out six meals a, a week and I'd never cooked anything in my life. But I knew that my health was like the most important thing. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. The second I get boots back on continental United States, I got 30 days to figure this out. And uh, that's kind of where it all started. And, and I talk about my theory of cooking all the time with people. But you don't have to go to culinary school. You don't have to be a chef. Honestly, you don't have to know anything. All you have to do is pick one recipe and master it. And once you have the confidence, you just start changing one thing at a time. And before you know it, once you've mastered five recipes, you have 780 combinations of different food that you can make. And it doesn't require a degree. It doesn't require fancy tools. It requires an open flame and a pan and some passion to feed yourself life is what I look at it as. Man, oh, that's awesome. I'm saying there's so much, I told you, yeah. value ooze. Oozing from a Secret source. of the ooze, <laughs> Ninja Turtles Part 17. This I'll is see. so good, man. So good. Yeah. And I love the fact that he is bringing it back to simplicity because a lot of times we get really in our heads about this stuff, you know, like I don't have this and, and take it outside of the spectrum of just food or being a chef, you know, people are like, well, I don't have the certifications. I don't have this degree. You don't need a degree to help people. You know, you don't need somebody to give you permission to give your gift, you know, and these are things that all of us have the right to, like you have the right to prepare good food for yourself and for other people. I absolutely love that, man. Thank you. That's so perfect too, especially for me as a mom. One of the challenges that I speak to people about all the time that what are we going to feed the children? How can we make sure they're going to eat healthy? And mastering one meal to set that off is the best inspiration I could have right now. Awesome. And so just really quickly, man, you know what? Jade, you're the best. But you know what? Um, You mentioned Rob Wolf's book. So that's the paleo solution. And so you are really known as a paleo-esque chef. Mm -hmm. So all of your recipes and the cave. So let's talk about the civilized caveman for a minute. Like where did that name come from? Why do you call it civilized caveman? Um, yeah, I, I'd love to. And Jade, thank you for your input. I have something to add to that. I'll make a little cliff note to drop it at the end of my answer. Um, the civilized caveman. So when I came back from Afghanistan, I was like, this is my mission. Like, I'm going to make this work. So I literally had two recipes and I rotated through them. 
underneath the surface, I was like a duck on a pond. My feet were going a million miles a minute because I was struggling with my body. I was mm -hmm. struggling with accepting myself and loving myself and being okay with how I was all while still trying to make a different choice and overcome my eating disorder and my body dysmorphia. So I needed something to hold myself accountable. So I started a Facebook page and I was like, if I post everything I do on this Facebook page, I'm putting it outside of myself and I'm making myself accountable to other people. And so I created it so I had no other choice but to cook every day mm -hmm. and keep this thing going. I think two people followed me and they were both my friends and that's okay. <laughs> yep. And uh, after, after about three months, someone's like, you should put this stuff on a blog. And I didn't know what a blog was. I Googled it. I started Blogger and then I copied my recipes over and they're like, you need a name. And I'm like, well, caveman's taken and paleo's taken. And then I wanted everything to sound good. So I went to civilized caveman cooking creations <laughs> and my logo was actually a bundle of wheat wrapped in C4 for the four C's of civilized caveman cooking creations. A <laughs> uh, little too much, a little too creative. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so a couple years later, I, I shortened the prefix down to just the civilized caveman and that's where the name came from. And it was just, um, a lot of the stuff that I was reading at the time. And I mean, you've been around the health niche for a while, you know, paleo has experienced this huge thing of dogmacy and it is the most counterproductive thing ever. Like there is no perfect way. The perfect way is the way in which you choose to do it. And I feel like people needed to really relate to that. So putting the name civilized in there, I'm like, I'm going to use a stove. I'm going to use a microwave. I'm going to blog about it on my iPhone because I'm not a caveman. <laughs> I live in modern times and yes. I'm replicating a system that works. But I wanted people to connect with the fact that this is okay to evolve and okay to grow as individuals and people and improve upon things and use the things that we've created to set ourselves up to win. Yeah. So that's that's where that came from. Absolutely. And talk about civilized, man. I mean, your kitchen right now, if people want to check out the video of this episode, head over to themodelhealthshow.com <laughs> and you can check out the video and actually get a peek at George's kitchen where all the magic happens. Yes. You know, so for me, the magic happens in the bedroom because I wrote a book on sleep. Slow down, Jay. I, I did because not I wrote even a book on there. sleep. I know you. Best selling book, Sleep Smarter. You got but it. But yeah, man. So you guys can check out the video. But anyways, man, yeah, I love that about you because the reality is we can't run away from what's happening on this planet. There are very few actually indigenous tribes that um haven't been contacted by us. You know, and oftentimes when they find these tribes they think are, you know, kind of cut off from, from civilization, they're wearing like a Nike t shirt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The world has changed so much and we're all connected. But what we need to do is is carry those things over that our ancestors share with, her, with, with us that worked, yeah. you know, and plus add in our new technology and get a nice blend going. Because being like a Luddite and trying to hide out and, you know, um, acting like this stuff isn't happening is, is not really going to be to our advantage, especially if we want to leave a legacy here on the planet. You know, I really found that it's best practice to kind of sneak the good guys under the door, mm -hmm. you know, be a part of the system, but be able to see it for what it is, right. you know? And I love that framework that you have of, you know, kind of following the paleo nutrition and avoiding a lot of problematic foods, but still utilizing the cool stuff we have access to today. And then being, being so vulnerable that you can evolve before us and give us automatically permission to e evolve as well. You know, you had civil civilized in there, but that, just keeps evoking gentlemen to me. How kind of you and how civil of you to do that for us. Thank you. I, uh, and you know what? That brings me to my perfect cliff note for Jade and what you said. <laughs> it really landed with me when you said that it was the inspiration that you needed, like just mastering one meal to feed your children healthy. Well, I'm going to take it a step deeper for okay. you because I feel like one of the biggest disconnects that we have as a society is food is life we've gotten so attached to this hustle and bustle and commute and phones and everything else. The one thing that gives us life, like our life force that allows us to function is the thing that we spend the least amount of time preparing or perfecting to give ourselves health and wellness. That's amazing. We have a vehicle that we drive down the road. When it runs out of gas, we need gas in it to keep going. We get oil changes so the engine works. We change the tires so we can keep going. But yet our bodies 
take us through life 24 hours a day and it tells us that we're hungry and we ignore it. It tells us that we're tired and we don't go to sleep because other people and crazy marketers and other priorities have come first. Well, I hate to, I hate to break it as simple as possible, but every day we are trading a day of our lives for the choices that we make. And my goal is to make your life and my life as long and healthy as possible. And that starts with food. And I love that Jade said that because I have a 10 year old. She's my bonus daughter. She calls me bonus dad. I stepped in and I'm like, I love you. You're mine. I'll take care of you forever. She gets love notes in her lunches every day yes. because I realize the importance of developing a healthy relationship. But when someone is vulnerable and someone like comes over to dinner at your house or comes over to eat your food, they are truly surrendered and trusting you to feed them and give them life. Like that is one of the most powerful testaments to community and what you can do for people. It's like humanity in general. And I really want people to get connected back to that because when Sean comes over my house for dinner or my friends or I'm feeding my wife or I'm feeding my child, I am providing them life. Yes. And if I don't prepare and put my heart and soul into it, I could also be providing disease yeah. and sickness and not the appropriate things that they need. And it is the biggest deal in the world. So Forgive my little rant on that one, mm. but that one struck. That, no, yeah. that was a, that, that cliff in. note was yeah. very, very important and very powerful, man. Like that speaks volumes for me, you know, mm -hmm. that you just spoke, you just articulated something that I feel deeply and yes. that a lot of people listening as well, you know, we're tuned into this stuff and it's, it's really about empowerment and understanding how powerful we are to evoke change in our own lives and in the lives of the people we care about, you know, when we're preparing that food that's going to be on the dinner table including you know, the powerful. food of thought and heart that you prepare in this program every week so yes i am so thankful for what you just said but i also want to say sean you put that into what you serve us each week you do because we're ingesting that i mean we're absorbing this into our fibers yeah and what greater show of love, demonstration of love that you and George just said, if you make sure that it's going to be given life. I'm with it. I'm yes. sold. I am there. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Jay. It's and true. George is part of this superhero absolutely. team, you know, that's, that's really transforming the way that people are doing things, you know, mm -hmm. and bringing things to a high level. And this brings me mm -hmm. back to an important point and something that we crossed over. You've mentioned a couple of times, and I want to talk more about this because people reach out and they ask me about this, you know. Um, I think it was maybe just two weeks ago was the last time somebody just specifically it was actually a guy asked if we did a show talking about some of the things surrounding eating disorders, you know, and this was a question that I would get a lot actually uh, historically, um, but oftentimes it's women. And this is something that's kept off of the table a lot of times in the conversation is that this does impact men too. Like we can have body image issues. We can have disoriented uh, relationships, yeah. you know, with food and with ourselves as well, you know, so this is a great conversation to be able to have it with this man, yes. you know, and so just let's, let's talk a little bit about it, man. Let's talk about your, your story with it. Like what was kind of the triggering event? Because this is what I found clinically is that there's always this triggering event and sometimes it's looked past, but you looked right at it and you knew what it was. So let's, let's get into it, man. All right, so Jade, here comes the V-bomb. So <laughs> V is invulnerable because uh, I'm going to preface this with another, another thing that runs me every day. And I've talked to Sean about this numerous times. But okay. the key to a true, grounded, happy life requires two things, in my opinion, authenticity and vulnerability. Being able to stand in your moment and stand in your power and own your energy, no matter what the circumstances of your life, allows you to create the change. And that's why I'm going to start with how I start. And I'm going to do it. I'll do it like I do on stage. Hi, I'm George. I'm 31 years old. I was sexually abused twice as a child. I was bulimic for 12 years of my life and had an extremely unhealthy relationship with food. And now I am standing or listening or hearing in, directly in front of you the happiest man on the planet creating different results because I found out my core values and beliefs about what was truly important. So my bulimia started at 15 years old and I'll remember it for the rest of my life and it's okay. Yeah. I was getting ready to go to the first dance I'd ever gone to. Um, my family had social services involved. We had drug abuse, alcohol abuse, as I just spoke about sexual abuse. I had what you would call a dysfunctional family. I never had a family meal at a table with my family my entire life. 
So me going to school and having this whole social thing and actually being invited somewhere was huge, especially given the overbite. I'd had my nose broken three times before I was 14 from bullying. I was the only white kid in my class for three years. Like I, I kind of had the, the Mazel Tov cocktail of mm. like, let's see how tough this kid really is. And I was getting fitted. And I remember at the store, the gentleman who was helping me was phenomenal. This man was like the most grounded, humble man because I needed a jacket that was like eight sizes off of the size pant that I need. Because men will know when you go to buy a suit, a specific size jacket, let's say a 46, typically comes with like a 33 pant. Right. Well, I needed a 44 pant in high school with like a 38 jacket. And he was very accommodating and it was going to be an upcharge. And a couple family members made comments and how it was an inconvenience and how if I had taken care of myself and I wasn't fat, that it wouldn't have been that way. And that was the single event. I remember it specifically. I went home. I cried for hours and I was like, I'm not valuable. They judge me for the way that I look. Even my family thinks I'm an inconvenience. And that was the first time that I ever purged in my entire life. And uh, I was 15 years old. And then it never went away. I never told any about it. I never talked about it. I joined the Marine Corps. Like of all things, let <laughs> me join the Marine Corps. Talk about Napoleon complex. Like I'm going to prove it to people. <laughs> I left. I went to boot camp. I was the honor graduate at boot camp. I went to Marine combat training. I was the honor graduate there. I went to my job school. I was the honor graduate there. And I was meritorious promoted through my entire career to the rank at which I left at. All while no one knew that I was only trying to be the best or look the best or be the strongest or the fittest to hide the fact that every day I cried underneath my skin. Every day I struggled mm. over and over. Every bite, every sip, every moment, every minute in the gym was all rooted in insecurity because secretly I hated who I was because I allowed someone else's insecurity to run me. Mm -hmm. And it took a long time for me to get the gusto to come out. And, uh, you know, there's a lot in the middle of that story. I almost lost my legs in 2004. I was in a wheelchair for 12 months. 18 months of physical therapy, gained 100 pounds to 257 pounds at my heaviest, lost my dad to cancer, kind of everything was all at once, got divorced. And uh, the resonating piece, the thing that kind of ran it all was my insecurity and me never thinking that I was good enough. Hmm. I came back, I started paleo and guess what? I was just a fraud like I thought I was. I was a paleo food blogger struggling with bulimia telling people how to live their life and make better choices. And I felt inauthentic. Yes. And the most powerful thing that I ever did, I wrote a post, I, wrote, I called it, Dear Bulimia, You Fought Hard, But I Won. Yes. And I sat there and stared at it and stared at it and stared at it. And I finally posted it and I let it go. And that whole thing was a, a closure, a, a door closing, but a release. Like I felt like I was free. And that's why I said at the beginning of this that authenticity and vulnerability are the two most powerful tools that you can possess in your, in your being, in your possession. Yeah. Because that alone allowed me to be free and just be like, I am George, I am who I am. I'm not defined by my behaviors. They were things that happened, but I can always choose something different. So yeah. in a nutshell, that's probably the most inspiring and empowering way I've told that story. Wow, man. You know what? Jade is over here, like her eyes I mean, are, I've yeah. got goosebumps <laughs> and... I'm trembling because the power in what you just said. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. yeah. I'm so proud don't of you. Make, and don't make me cry. I, <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm going to just tell you from my heart because at every point that I still sense the determination to yeah. not be overcome by that misery and that agony. And it kept lopping on and, and piling on, but you, you did not quit. You might have hurt tremendously, but you did not quit. Yeah. And I hear that, and that tells me don't quit. Yes. And yeah. I know there's others that hear that, and like, I don't have to quit. And it could be hard as heck to hang on to that little string. But every time, it, you, you made that past come out of your future. And instead of being obstruction to your future and your opportunities, you put it in the past, and then you kept opening up new opportunities and ways to step. And then there wasn't some unsurmountable wall in your way they were just other things to overcome yeah and look how wonderfully free you are to free others yeah 
I love what the a fact. Beautiful thing. I love the fact that he says that he's the happiest man. Right, and he's listening on to Earth. Him. Yes, okay. and this is what's possible, you know, guys. Like, and I know that I know George. This is this is my guy. Like, he still goes through stuff, but he's coming out every single time a better person and a more inspirational person just to be around or to hear from, you know. And all of us, we have our story, you know, but it doesn't define us. We define us. We have the opportunity to choose. And this is what he's really speaking to is the fact that we get to choose yes. no matter what negative things we've gone through or what negative things lie before us. We get to choose what they mean. No you know? matter what. And I, I want to go back because this is super important because I know a lot of people are feeling the same way. You brought up, you said something about, you know, being inauthentic and being a fraud, you know, and there are so many people who reach out over the years and I'm speaking to you guys right now who have been like, you know, Sean, I'm in the health space, but I, I'm a, I myself, I don't feel like I represent that, you know, for whatever reason, maybe it's the appearance, maybe it's some things going on behind closed doors. And you guys, and the ones that I've talked to personally, you know how special you are, you know, and this is what it's really all about is working on our own stuff so we can be of greater service. Yes. Because what you're going through is part of your story so that you can actually touch somebody who otherwise wouldn't feel like they're understood. You know, this is so important. And so him getting congruent was part of this formula. And I want to talk about some of the pieces within it. You know, you mentioned purging, right? So let's get more specific. Like, what does that mean specifically, like in, in lay terms? And also, um, how, how much was this going on? Was this a daily thing? Would you be okay for a while? Because it's what I tend to see is people are okay for a while, then an event will trigger sure. them back. So talk about it, man. I actually appreciate you opening the opportunity to dive into that. Yeah. Um, and you said something at the beginning of this too, that you had a lot of questions about this from women, some men. Statistically speaking, uh, men are very less likely to come forward about it. I will share something that after I wrote that post, I got over 4,000 emails in like 96 hours. It was insane. Yeah. The oldest one was from an 81 year old man who was still struggling. And the youngest one was from a 12 year old boy and it broke my heart. Um, so don't ever pretend like things might not be going on. You never know what's going on under the surface and right. men and women are equal in this matter because all of us have our stories and have the same things we make up and we all get to love each other and love our bodies. So, uh, to, to shed some light. So purging for everyone listening, uh, for me was binge eating and then throwing up every single thing that I ate until the point of stomach acid and nothing but liquid came up. And this was a constant and it depended on how I felt about myself. If I was really, really deep, I would actually binge eat and purge and then binge eat again to punish myself for doing it the first oh, time. Wow. And it was this repetitive self-sabotage cycle. And Sean, you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, it wasn't every day. Um, I think the only people in my life that knew were the dentists that I went to because every single dentist I've seen in the course of my life has known right from the get go from looking and no one else knew, but it would, it would come in, in phases, you know, life would feel amazing. I'd be riding the high. It was almost like bipolarity. Like life was great. Everything was great. I'm good. I'm healthy. I'm great. And then something comes, something knocks me down. Something doesn't feel good. And then I start spiraling out of control because I became a victim of my circumstances. And then that's when my purging, and my binge eating got to the worst. And I will tell you that the worst part was after my last surgery, um, I actually stayed in my barracks room for over two weeks at a time without seeing or talking to any other human being. I had a PCA pump in my spine, which is for everyone wondering, a patient controlled anesthetic for mm. pain. And I would hit a button every seven minutes. I ate about two to three large pizzas a day. I took my pain meds and then I threw them up. And this went on for probably 30 days straight. And I, f I felt nothing. Like I felt nothing. Like there was no hope. There was nothing on the other side. There was nothing that can be done. And that was what I was in. And, you know, I say that to share because there's a lot of stuff that I've experienced in my life. And notice how I didn't say stuff that's happened to me. Mm -hmm. I said stuff that I've experienced in my life. The universe tests us over and over until we get the message and make a different choice to come out on the other side to help and empower other people. My life has been perfectly crafted for me to share this message and to know that no matter what comes up, I can always choose something different. And, you know, I don't want to burst everybody's bubble out there, 
uh, I don't believe hope exists. Mm -hmm. I believe you exist and you have the power to create anything that you want by taking action to have different results in your life. So yeah. that's my little caveat to that one. But yeah. um, yeah, so that was my, my, my struggle of bulimia. And I, just to be out there, I've never seen a therapist. I've never gone to counseling. I've never gone to anything. I came out to the world and I used the world as my counselor and I used my vulnerability and authenticity to stay congruent. And I'm really glad that you brought that up. Yeah. I don't want anyone to listening to think that I'm calling you a fraud. The easiest way to describe it is that who I was being was not congruent with my core values on who I thought I was. So I was experiencing cognitive dissonance. Yeah. I thought something was one way, but it was actually the other. And until those energies aligned and I felt that I was walking the same path, I truly couldn't make a difference. Yes. And there are many, many hues of that on that line, on that. Yeah, on, absolutely. From each extreme. We live that on many levels. Yeah. And I love the fact that you, I've, I've never, this is why I love this guy is I've never heard anyone else artic articulate mm -hmm. the fact that um, with hope, right. you know, that hope really isn't this thing because here, here's the thing. You've heard this before. Hope floats. Mm-hmm. Right. It's so right. It's so here, there, hit or miss, you know, I hope. And even people operating their lives on that premise, you know, that I hope this happens. I hope mm -hmm. that I mm -hmm. lose weight. I hope that I, you know, um, heal from this uh, issue with my liver. Or I hope that this relationship works out. If you're living your life on hope mm -hmm. and it floats, you know, it's very uh, unstable. Guess think. what's going to happen instead of making declarations you know, and affirmation and incantations and declaring things for yourself and having standards as well, you know, and it's more so not, it's more so about really, and we talked about this multiple times, I feel the number one most influential thing in our lives and our health and our success in life is our relationships. Mm -hmm. I think that that standard is the utmost of importance for sure. And, and holding accountable those people that we have in our lives or allowing them people to not be in our lives. You know, because I know this was part of the way that George has become the person who he is, you know, especially getting such a wonderful partner that he has mm -hmm. right now in Lindsay. And so, you know, thank you for going a little bit deeper and talking about some of the pieces. Now I want to talk about how, you yes. know, and some of, this, some of the tips, some of the solutions, some of the things that helped to get you from there to where you are today. Right. I mean, we're talking... People sometimes struggle with getting from day to day. We're talking every bite, he said, was painful. Yeah. So lay it on us, man. What are some of the things? And again, I know you don't have to even do the caveat that this works for you. And this is no, not typical no. for everybody. But just some of the things that you did personally. You know, I don't, I don't do that caveat because I feel like if you're asking me the question, the universe is telling me someone needs to hear it. So yes. I will say, number one, and this has been going on. I just want to, I want to let everybody know that I did that post, I think three years ago. And since then I have been straight as a whistle clean. I've been tempted. I've had moments of doubt. I've had moments of insecurity like Sean said, and I really appreciate him bringing this up and holding me accountable. I say I'm the happiest man on the world and on this planet because that's the declaration I make because that's what I want to align my life to be. Yesterday I cried for eight hours while I was struggling with doubt about my future and insecurities and things that run me while my story and circumstances were currently winning until I had someone I love kick me in the butt, <laughs> jumpstart me and say, hey, those tears are great. Let's create something different together. And that's when the declarations come out. So I just want to be real with people. I say this often and people look at me funny. I think that beauty is in the messy details because that's where growth and life happens. Nothing happens in shiny suits on stages looking pretty. Mm. Life and growth happens with tears and pain and happiness and joy and excitement and every messy little detail. So when you go to bed at night, I am completely okay if you are covered in scrapes and cuts and bruises and ripped jeans, as long as you have a smile on your face and you know that you did your best. And that's what I live by because commitment is not feelings. And that is my number one key to success and choosing something different. I hear it all the time. I want to be better. I want to be better. All right, I'm going to be better. I'm going to do this for three days or five days or seven days. Great. Awesome. Day two. What happened? Well, I just didn't feel like it. 
And I'm like, look up the definition of commitment. Where does it say that it has anything to do with your feelings? I want people, myself included, to make commitments and weigh my life on them because your life matters. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about bulimia, personal development, life, business, relationships. That's your word. Like that is your word. And if you break your word to yourself, you'll never succeed. And when you make commitments, you are giving your word to yourself and to the people around you. You want a fulfilled life. You want success. You want results. You keep your word to yourself and never let anything sway from that. So my number one tip is to make commitments and follow through with them. Commitments are not feeling and everything is possible. And there's ways to do that. Yeah. There's ways to do that to set yourself up to win. And one of them is uh, the four rules that we always talk about uh, because anyone that's listening that's currently in that space that may be struggling with health or eating disorders or incongruency, there's four simple rules that allow you to relate to your life in a positive manner. No blame, no guilt, no fault, and no shame. Yes. I'm going to say it again. No blame, no guilt, no fault, and no shame. You have done nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing stopping you from being different. You are perfect, whole, and complete as you are. You get to look at yourself and acknowledge the power that it takes to even stand in the thought that you choose to be different. Acknowledge yourself for that and move forward. Build yourself up. And I say this, I said this on stage at Paleo FX, take every opportunity that you have throughout the day to acknowledge yourself. That's my tip number two. Loving yourself is acknowledging yourself. When you get out of the shower, I want you to stand there when you're done drying off and look in the mirror and say, I am a sexy person. Like I am clean as a whistle and I am a sexy person. I want you to walk downstairs and strut your stuff and be like, hey, babe, or hey, honey, I'm sexy. Don't you love me? Like, don't you want to give me a kiss? Like I'm beautiful. Like I want you to take every opportunity to be obnoxiously obsessed with building yourself up and building your confidence and keeping that momentum moving forward. And the third thing is that you have to set smart goals. And this was huge for me. And by smart, there's an acronym that goes with that. So smart is smart, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-based. You need to set yourself up to win. When you're like, hey, I want to lose 100 pounds. Great, that's an awesome goal. I'm going to ask you by when and how. What are you going to lose by next week? What are you going to lose by the week after that? Or, hey, I want to get a raise at work. Awesome. What are you specifically going to do to create those results? How many hours extra are you going to work per week? How many different results are you going to do? How many more emails are you going to respond to? You need to create actionable goals. So for people that are struggling with eating disorders, this is what I did. I made a goal that I needed to talk to someone close to me in my life and be vulnerable about my struggles at least once a week. I needed to get on the phone and be real and be like, this is it. Like, this is how I'm feeling. I'm struggling. I don't want to keep going. And I had to make commitments with meals. I had to say, no matter what, I'm going to eat at minimum two whole balanced meals a day. Now, I didn't say I can't have brownies. I didn't say I couldn't have cookies. And I didn't say I couldn't have pizza. I said I was just going to eat two meals a day. Yeah. And as my snowball continued to grow, my confidence grew. My skill set developed into being positive and you know, focused on my goals and intentions, like you said, and declarations and affirmations. And that's when I got to tighten it down. Yeah. But the only important step that matters right now is the first one that you take. And I'm okay with anything you choose to do as long as you're moving forward. Yes. Love it, man. Ah, allow listen, that step to happen. This, this is so important. You know, um, I, he, he, he didn't call this one out specifically, but it's, it's buried in there for sure. And just talking about, talking about it, right. you know, and not being afraid, not being scared. Mm-hmm. So talk a little bit about that, man. Or I see you nodding your head. didn't do it anyway. I, That was one that I forgot. So uh, this is what, this is how it relates to me. And this is what it works for me. Our brains are our own worst enemies because our thoughts create our actions, which create our results. And if you have negative self thoughts or you have stories running you, it works against you. Mine is horrible. It's good. Like my brain is tricky Mm -hmm. and it's good. And what I realized is that with my struggles, with my past, with things that I've experienced in my life from the sexual abuse to the bulimia, My biggest fear was always what other people would think about me. So if I'm like, if I talk about this, they're going to judge me. They don't want to be my friend. They're not going to support me. They're going to think I'm weird. And my head made up these stories like, oh, if I say that, they're going to keep their kids away from me. They're not going to hang out with me. All these stories. The most powerful moment was me is when I stood up and said, hey, this is what I am. And the only thing I ever received was, oh, that's 
awesome. Do you want to talk about it more or should we just move on and, you know, keep being <laughs> awesome people? Yes. And what I realized is that by speaking our thoughts into existence, by putting them out there into the universe, we neutralize the charge. Yeah. We take off every bit of energy that it has to control us, to run us, to be whatever it is, because all of a sudden, it's not this whole thing that's creating this monstrous nightmare in our head. It's out there in the open and people have the chance to respond. Yeah. And here's the, here's the simple truth. When people respond, they build you up, acknowledge you and encourage you, keep those people in your life. If people judge you, put you down or whatever, no shame to them. It's just time to not be around those people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with the people that build you up, inspire and empower you to be the best version of yourself and spend more time loving them back. But yes, yeah, speaking it into existence, the authenticity of it and the whole truth of it, like radical honesty, like every ounce of it, not like, oh, it kind of happened. I mean, like own it, like walk into a space and energetically own it. Yeah. And you know what? You see the greats do it. You see everybody do it. And, then, yeah. and, it, and it's, it's not to acknowledge them or say, hey, look what I did. It's to empower and inspire people. Yes. Like, hey, we all have experiences in life. We've all been through things. And as a cohesive team and unit and by building each other up and just acknowledging and loving and being open and vulnerable and compassionate, we can make a difference. So yeah, that's how I feel about that one. Absolutely. <laughs> he wrapped Absolutely. it all up real nice and yeah. tight. But oh my God. You know, this is experientially, you know, real talk right here. This is why I felt so close and connected to you. Mm -hmm. You know, very early on in us meeting each other, you know, uh, you shared some of these things with me and I didn't feel anything but closer to you. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, like I felt like I, I understood you, you know, and that's a very comfortable feeling for another person outside of you you know, to actually know what, what's going on with you, you know, because we do, we put up a lot of mask, you know, and this is, um, shout out to Jim Carrey, mm -hmm. the movie, the mask, <laughs> but he, he's not the only one that got famous that way. I think there's a song that says something like that, wearing mask, you know, like we all do that, especially in the world today where everybody is really, you know, again, this is real talk. We're all really a company. You're like, you're your own company now. Like if you've got a Facebook page, you're like an advertisement. Yeah. Right. And so there's so much stuff there that can start to get crossed up and really getting back to the, the, the essential things, because this is how a lot of people are winning, but also winning their life and winning love is by being transparent, you know, because the reality is at some point, even though you might be trying to hide and to struggle and tuck it in a little dark corner, this stuff comes out, you know, and if it doesn't like this is a painful way to live your life. Yeah. And whether it is, you know, for George's path is different, but whether it is, you know, talking with professional, you know, and of course I highly recommend doing your homework on who that person is so that they can understand things in a more holistic fashion, not just, you know, oh, well, here's a drug for that right. and here's two for that, you know, like <laughs> somebody that actually cares about you as a person that there's far more ways to the gold than just by medicating you. So whatever that is, you know, is to, to talk about it, to not be afraid, to to really gather up the courage, because that's I think that's the number one quality. You know, George mentioned some, mentioned some things, but also just experientially and seeing this stuff clinically, courage, yep. you know, having the heart to be you and to be honest and to be open and understand that there are so many people struggling very similarly to what you are and to get that conversation going, because I, I promise it's a huge weight off your shoulder and it starts the process of healing, Sure, you know, so. And that's kind of what he was talking about, about being free once he released it to his blog and the world, but he released it not necessarily to somebody, but from himself. And then it was available for others to, to connect with, but that's the kind of two part of this social media thing. Now you may put it out there to, to share and to release for yourself. That's great. And you may get likes and feedback and things that support you. But like you said, get around those that will encourage and, and uplift you. Yes. You'll get plenty of mess out there too. Yeah. There may be, but you don't have to connect with that. You don't have to log on to that. I promise you that a positive, affirmative action or thought given to you by another person is thousands of times stronger than a negative, you know? But we tend to focus on the negative because it's built in with our, you know, with our amygdala, you know, our reptile brain. brain. But having that close proximity, it Im impacts you so much deeper. You just don't know it because the, the negative thing, it's inflammatory. It's mm -hmm. like a sharp pain right then. But that positive thing really helps to define you. I you love know? the so, inflammatory analogy too. I want to go back now, George, and talk a little bit about, because this is so important, 
let's talk about relationship with food. You know, mm-hmm. you've given us this beautiful picture of what it could look like. And also we've talked about, you know, more of a not so beautiful picture as well. So yeah. let's talk about getting a positive relationship with food because I'm going to say one more thing really quickly before I let you take the floor is even quote healthy people, you know, like myself, there's still a communication. There's still a, a, a language, a relationship that happens with food. And for a lot of health people who are on a healthy way of life, it can be a little bit neurotic. You mm-hmm. know, it can be, get to be too much. Right. And we start to have a, a different kind of poor relationship with food. So let's get into it, man. Let's talk about it. Yeah, and uh, just that's called orthorexia, which is another eating disorder. And uh, I just want everybody to know, and this is just a prevalence stat, that in order to be considered bulimic, you have to meet the classification of binge eating and purging. But if you eat normal and purge, you're not considered bulimic. So when you look at numbers, it's grossly underestimated for the amount of people that struggle. And I think what you just said is, is really important because the natural swing of my journey, and I like to talk about my journey because it's what I know and um, it's how it works. But the natural swing of my journey was to go from obsessive controlling every bite being painful and hurting and having this to the other swing of I'm going to do it so perfectly yeah. that I'm never going to fail, falter, and ever go down that road again, which, by the way, is another recipe for disaster. Yes. And the true, the true piece of this is uh, I love it with food. I, I tell people uh, the reason I use, as you, as you can understand from my talk, I'm, I'm really just not a paleo food blogger. Uh, I love everything, mindset, health, family, relationships. Yeah. Food for me is a catalyst to teach you how to create breakthrough results everywhere in your life. Food is the easiest thing to use, have, practice, and utilize every day to create new habits to change your patterns. So I will talk about it with food, and I will talk about it in a simple, measurable way for you to create results. A healthy relationship with food is nothing more than you viewing it differently than you have in the past, which as we've talked about, Jade's mentioned it, Sean's mentioned it, it's a choice. It's just a choice. Every single one of us, I'll take the three of us for example, Sean, Jade, and I can all go out to breakfast and we can all eat pancakes, whether they're paleo, gluten-free or not. We are all three of us going to have different interpretations of that event in itself. Jade may be like, oh, I feel great. I love pancakes. Sean may be like, oh, that was my cheat meal for the week. And I may be like, man, I want to go throw those up because I hate that I did that. Mm. The event itself is neutral. Yes. Nothing changed about the event. How we see it is what dictates everything. So that's where the power of our choice comes in. So what I like to say is make those smart commitments, make those smart goals. Let's say it's as simple as, hey, I want to drink an extra glass of water every day for the next seven days. That's actionable, it's time-based, it's measurable, and you can succeed at it. At the end of day one, when you're getting ready to rest your head on the pillow, look back at your day. You had seven and a half glasses of water, but your goal was eight. You have a couple options. Sean mentioned this about five minutes ago. 99% of us go to, look, I just didn't do it. Like I could have, I said I was going to, and I failed. Look how bad I am. Look how bad of a person I am. I can't do anything right. This is where the power of your mind comes in. In that same moment, you also have a different choice. You can say, wow, I didn't do it. And I said I was. What was missing? What was missing for me to miss my goal by only a half a cup of water? And what's it going to take tomorrow to hit my goal? You wake up on Tuesday. Today's my eight glasses of water day. I want to go. Tuesday night comes around. You were in meetings all day, long commute, weren't feeling good. You had six glasses of water. You even went backwards. Mm -hmm. Once again, you're presented with a choice. How you relate to those choices and decisions and results that you created. I will once again invite you to look at what didn't work, then look at what works, and figure out what you need to bring to the table for the next day. And when you can live your life looking at situations as neutral, you get to see things from a broader perspective, from like an upper level of like, you know what, like this life, like life is a game and I can succeed by winning and I'm given the tools every day on how to play the perfect game for my life. And it's just what I choose to do with them. So in your game of life, I just want you to pick a goal, like just pick one. And and because I'm with the master of sleep, 
I want you to pick a goal of sleep because really your life is nothing if you don't sleep. Your brain doesn't function, your body doesn't function. Sean's been lecturing you about that for a hundred and something episodes, dropping knowledge bombs, and I agree with him. But we all make concessions for our health and sleep's a perfect one. If you're only sleeping four hours a night, we all know it's not gonna sustain. Maybe your goal is to sleep five and maybe you only get to 4.15 or 4.30, but you have to celebrate every win. Yeah. Remember what I said when you got out of the shower, you're a sexy person yes. because you celebrated the fact that you bathed. Celebrate the fact that you still had seven glasses of water or celebrate the fact that you still had four and a half hours of sleep and then focus on what you're going to bring to the table tomorrow. Like that's, that's, that's really what it is. Like I, I can't create an empire overnight, but I can do one step every day to build a foundation to let the empire grow itself. Like every single thing is possible. Like they didn't build the pyramids overnight. Hate to tell you, like we didn't get to the point in the country where we are overnight. You didn't run a marathon overnight. You didn't get to be 31, 36, or 38 years old overnight. You lived 365 days a year in moments where you chose to get to this point in your life. And so I think that the best thing that anybody can do, myself included all day, every day, is to choose to relate to my circumstances in an empowering manner and celebrate every win. Yeah. And then just take a quick look and be like, great, I can do it better. Let's do it better tomorrow or let's do it better right now and live your life that way. It's freeing, it's inspiring and surround yourself with people that support that goal, your significant other, your children. I mean, look at your children. Like my, my 10 year old bonus daughter inspires every ounce of passion in my body to be a better person. Yeah. And it, you're surrounded with the tools to win. So I'm just gonna, I'll just make it simply. Will you please win today? <laughs> yes. yes. Just please. Just ask. Yes. Yes, man. Thank you. This, I told you guys, I told you guys yeah. oozing value. And it's because, again, it's because of the story, you know, and identifying with that story differently because we all truly have a choice. And I, man, I appreciate you so much for sharing that. And, you know, more so than anything, I really appreciate everybody listening because I know that you're listening a little bit deeper today. I know yes. that you're listening from your heart perspective and seeing those, those spaces in our own lives, you know, even if we're doing really well, where we're playing small or where we have this negative self-talk, you know, or if you're struggling right now and really getting a call to action to change that, because it's really, this is, this is not a simple fix. You know, this is something we're talking about. Well, part of it is simple. It's really the decision happens like right, right now, it instantly. It, the decision happens the moment that you choose for it to happen, but what takes us time is getting to the place where we make the decision. And oftentimes that requires of getting, not just the conscious mind and saying I'm gonna do these things, but getting into the subconscious. And that's really where we get to, you know, conversations we had, we did a show on productivity. Yeah. And I talked about myelin in the brain and just kind of anchoring in certain behaviors or ways of thinking, all of that gets anchored in and programmed in your brain. It's not easy to break apart the old programs. It's so much easier to create a new one, you know, and you keep reaffirming that. And that's really what he's talking about. And I love the fact also he mentioned something uh, to me before about writing it down, mm -hmm. you know, writing your, your specifics down on your goals and the person that you want to be. Because it's a, pro it's a process of creation in and of itself. And that's part of that setting yourself up to succeed. Yeah. See, if you write it down, you can't run from it anymore. It's tangible. Exactly. And this is what we do here is... It's all about stacking the conditions in your favor I love when you to say make that. failure impossible, yeah. right? Stack the conditions. Every good thing that you can do for yourself, especially in regards to the people in our lives, you know, which he's brought up some gems about that is super important. And so on that note, you know, we're, we're getting close to the, the end of the show and there's so much more that I want to talk about with George, of course, and I get to, I but I'm also going to be able to share him again with you guys in the future. But um, his food, let me tell you, oh, yeah. the recipes <laughs> are just like insane in the membrane. I'm telling you, they're so <laughs> good. Like every recipe that we made has been fantastic. And if you can, I know, of course, you've got a New York Times bestselling book. So sh just share where people can find your book, but also share with people because you give so much away free i mean just giving the most giving person as well so what are like three of your favorite go-to recipes that people should check out on your website for free <laughs> no, I, I had I, I i had them ready so sean um <laughs> the banana bread that's like the one that's my claim to fame yeah. i can't speak highly of it enough uh it's my go-to for kids and people that want to snack on the go 
So I have a paleo banana bread recipe on my website, which has been viewed like 7 million times in three years. I don't even get it. Um, and I'm going to give you some hacks that I don't talk about often. But that banana bread, you can use the same batter to make waffles, yes. freeze them, and then grab them out of the freezer and throw them in your toaster for your kids. You can make muffins with them. Then you can take that banana bread and make banana bread pudding. And you can, you can like do everything with that banana bread. And I'll just tell you, it's so awesome. There's only eight ingredients. I'll tell you right mm -hmm. off the bat, top of my head, four bananas, four eggs, a half a cup of almond butter, a half a cup of coconut flour, vanilla, sea salt, cinnamon. Done. Wow. Seven ingredients. Seven. Wow. Yes. That's it. And it's so versatile for that yeah. thing. And, and it comes out perfect. FYI, we throw raisins in there too. Let's see. See? Raisins. I use chocolate chips just for my chocolate ob mm -hmm. obsession addiction, which is okay, by the way. It's all about how you relate to it. Ex um, exactly. Yes. And then uh, my second one, and this one's for Jade. I, I'll help you win on this one. Give me. Uh, my crock pot pulled pork. Oh. Now, Ooh. my business partner, one of my best friends, you know Abel quite well as mm -hmm. well. And uh, he made this recipe. And this recipe is the one that caused him to reach out to me and build our relationship, which mm. then fostered into us launching an app together, launching a book together. So that recipe is pretty much the key to my success in this world. And uh, yes. <laughs> it's the crock pot pulled pork. And just so you guys know, I love simplicity. Like Sean said, it's a pork shoulder rubbed with yellow mustard. I call it meat glue because it holds seasoning on without flavor. And then sprinkle with your favorite seasonings. You put it in the crock pot on low for 10 hours and you come back and you have food for a week. You can yes. put it in tacos. You can put it on salads. You can put it in your eggs. And you can freeze it and just pull a pound out at a time. You want to talk about how to win? That's how you win. That is how you win. And Crock-Pot has been the secret to being a lovable mom at this point. You have taken me to the next level. In parentheses, I am s officially hungry right now. <laughs> Mouth is salivating. Get one more, man. Oh, yeah. One more. And the third one, uh, I just posted on my website. It's on my homepage. It's the fluffy blueberry pancakes from my book, The Paleo Kitchen. Uh, hands down the the best pancake recipe i've ever had paleo or not mm. um lindsay loves them our daughter loves them lindsay actually loves them with chocolate chips and out of the refrigerator because they taste like chocolate chip cookies oh wow so we can call these fluffy blueberry pancakes chocolate chip cookie pancakes or whatever but they're phenomenal and all of them are on my website which is just civilizedcaveman.com um like you said uh, i'll just throw it out there a little self-promotion there's over 350 recipes and they're all free I also do weekly meal plans for free, which are 12 pages long, which include shopping lists, meal plans, side recipes, mindset stuff, how to stock your pantry. Like pretty much I want to give you every single thing that I can to make your life as easy as possible. And uh, just give me a high five or follow me on Instagram and we'll call it even. So oh, wow. love it. And where are you on Instagram? Instagram is Civilized Caveman, and my website is civilizedcaveman.com. And then uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere else through then. And then the book is the Paleo Kitchen. It's, uh, thank you for that. It was a 22 week New York Times bestseller, super humbling. Sweet. Sweet. I just love that more people are eating those pancakes. Right, yes. And, uh, <laughs> That's my guy. They're on page 95 of the book, by the way, but it's carried everywhere. And, and other than that, just, just come hang out with me online, say hi, and uh, that's all I ask. Well, see, that's, that could be that first win. What you're doing is you're creating a, a win opportunity. Like you said, can you just win today? If they tried that, there's that win. Yes, exactly. Man, thank you so much. It's just been an immense amount of value. And I've got one more question for you, man. And I like to ask all my guests this question. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you have to say. What is the model that you're here to set with the way that you're living your life? I like it. I know someone asked me a good question when I get speechless and I have to think for more than three seconds. Uh, wow. My goal has always been to be a phenomenal father and husband. Uh, and as a Marine, you know, I led from the front for 12 years. And what I thought I knew as a leader then uh, has kind of got demolished and smashed to pieces when there's other people who develop their core beliefs in this world around how you show up. My model is to be vulnerable and authentic and live by example, real, 100% raw, and to play big all the time, to spend my life playing big and knowing when I put my head on the pillow that I gave it my all. That's the model I want to live my life by. Love it. I received that. Everybody, check him out. Definitely check out George Bryant online. Uh, we'll connect everything over on themodelhealthshow.com. And definitely, of course, you can check out the video and hang out with us there.
I appreciate you guys oh so much. Yes. And George, I appreciate you as a person, as a friend. You already know, man. You're 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 really special to me, man. Yes. So I thank you so much for coming you. on, man. I want to salute you. I want to hug you. I want to thank you. All right. For everybody watching, I'm I'm e hugging or listening, Jade. Right, <laughs> Jade. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And your words uh, truly touched me. You're a phenomenal human being, and I appreciate it. And I hope your kids enjoy the food. Oh, yes. it, I am. When I leave here, I'm going to get it. Boom. Honestly. Awesome. Well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, just so many valuable takeaways and action items as well. You know, we really like to provide mindset shifts, but also things that are very, very actionable. You know, and I love, I mean, there's so many great takeaways and even just the small things like the way you communicate your, with yourself and even how you communicate with your with your loved one, the special person in your life, you know, I'm right, sexy, and I, you know, and just that communication. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this is so important. I mean, there's nothing more important than how you relate to yourself, you know, because the number one driving force of a human being is to stay congruent with the ideas you carry of yourself, you know, so it's important to remember that. And you get to get in there in that beautiful brain of yours and manage those ideas, you know, it's, it's up to you. And I hope that you really got that in a big way today, so. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. Have an amazing day, and I'll talk with you soon.